Lee Thompson is widely recognized for her role as Michael J. Fox's mother in the iconic Back to the Future trilogy. Throughout the 1980s, she was considered a rising star in the film industry. However, when the decade came to a close, her movie career stalled. Thompson shifted her focus to television, starting with a lead role in her own sitcom, followed by numerous made-for-TV movies. Despite being active in the entertainment industry for over 30 years, Thompson never reached the level of an eyeless celebrity. Today I would like to remember her career. In 1982, Thompson made her TV debut in commercials, including a holiday ad for Burger King that starred Elizabeth Shue and Sarah Michelle Gellar. The following year, she made her big screen debut in the film Jaws 3D. Thompson played a character who looked cute in a bikini. Later that year, Thompson starred opposite Tom Cruise in the coming-of-age football drama, All the Right Moves. Tom Cruise portrayed a high school football player who dreams of earning a scholarship to attend college and escape his small steel town in Pennsylvania. Kelly Thompson played Cruise's girlfriend who fears she may lose him if he leaves town. To better prepare for their roles, the director sent Cruise and Thompson back to high school. Cruise was immediately recognized, but Thompson went unnoticed for four days. During that time, many high school boys asked her out. The film is well known for the actors performing their own nudity in the romantic scenes. All the right moves didn't fare very well at the box office either. It opened in limited release in sixth place. Over the years, as Cruz grew to become one of the biggest movie stars in the world, the movie developed a cult following. In 1984, Kelly Thompson starred in the Cold War action film, Red Dawn, directed by John Milius. Red Dawn is centered on the unlikely scenario that the Soviet Union could conquer the United States. The film follows a group of high school students, led by Patrick Swayze and Charlie Sheen, who serve as the country's final defense against foreign invasion. Red Dawn marked Charlie Sheen's first film appearance. While it may be easy to dismiss Red Dawn as a mindless 80s action flick, the film generated controversy during the height of the Cold War. It was the first movie to receive a PG-13 rating in the Guinness Book of World Records. Recognized it for having the most acts of violence in a single movie, with a rate of 134 acts of violence per hour. Despite mixed reviews and controversy, Red Dawn was a box office success, opening at one and grossing nearly $40 million. This was a good return on the film's modest budget. In 1985, Thompson's career skyrocketed as she starred in Robert Zemecki's comedic time travel film, Back to the Future. Originally, Eric Stoltz was cast as Marty McFly. After a few weeks of shooting, Zemecki's decided to recast the role. However, Stoltz's involvement opened the door for Thompson. Zemecki's watched Stoltz in The Wild Life and was impressed with Thompson so he auditioned her for the role of Lorraine. Back to the Future received overwhelmingly positive reviews and was an immense success at the box office. It's not an exaggeration to say that it is one of the most adored films of the 80s. Following the success of Back to the Future, the actress was inundated with offers to star in major film projects. However, the next two films raised questions about her ability to be a bankable leading actress and bring in significant profits for the studios. Thompson starred in the sci-fi adventure, Space Camp, as an aspiring female space shuttle commander among a group of teenagers who are accidentally launched into space while they camp. However, the filming process was plagued with difficulties, as it stretched out beyond its originally planned three-month shoot to six months. The cast even created t-shirts with the sarcastic slogan, Space Camp, it's not just a movie, it's a career due to the cramped sets and long shoot. Space Camp's original release date was pushed back after the Challenger shuttle disaster, which was eerily like some of the events depicted in the movie. So Space Camp is doomed even before it begins. The film, with a budget of $18 million, failed at the box office and managed to collect only $9.5 million. Later that year, Thompson starred in George Lucas' adaptation of the Marvel comic book, Howard the Duck. Howard is the first Marvel character ever to make the jump to the big screen. 
Thompson played Beverly, a sexy rocker chic who meets a talking duck from another dimension. Initially, the plan was to create an animated film, but Lucas was required to make a live-action production instead. He chose to bring Howard to life through live action with special effect, which resulted in a departure from the satirical tone of the comic book and an emphasis on special effects. The character was also altered to become more relatable. Howard the Duck was panned by critics. It was nominated for seven Golden Raspberry Awards, including Worst Supporting Actor for Tim Robbins. It tied for Worst Picture with Princes Under the Cherry Moon. Howard the Duck also bombed at the box office, which resulted in studio head Frank Price being terminated. When the movie flopped, Lucas assured many that in 20 years Howard the Duck would be seen as a misunderstood masterpiece. Instead, it is remembered as one of the most notorious flops of all times. The failure of Howard the Duck put George Lucas in a difficult position, as he had recently completed building Skywalker Ranch and was in debt. He had hoped the film would help him regain financial stability, but when that didn't happen, he was forced to sell some of his assets to stay afloat. Fortunately, his friend Steve Jobs came to the rescue by purchasing Lucasfilm's newly established CGI animation division for a substantial sum. This division eventually became the highly successful Pixar Animation Studios. After two major failures, the actress' career might have started to decline. But the sequel Back to the Future reminded the public of Thompson once again. Most of the cast of the first movie returned for the sequels, including bit players like Billy Zane. Back to the Future Part 2 filmed at roughly the same time Thompson shot her episode of Tailies from the Crypt. She remembers the strain of wearing age makeup in both productions. The second movie in the Back to the Future franchise received mostly positive reviews but it was not as well received as the original film. It was a hit at the box office, but also lagged behind the first film commercially. In 1990, Thompson returned for the final chapter in the Back to the Future trilogy. The Back to the Future sequels were filmed back to back with a three week hiatus in between. The two movies were filmed over an 11 month period Zemeckis ended up flying between Sonora and Glendale so he could oversee editing for part two while shooting part three. Reviews were decent and the movie was a hit at the box office. However, it was the least commercially successful movie in the series. In 1992, Article 99 is a medical comedy directed by Thompson's husband, featured Kiefer Sutherland, Ray Liotta, Forrest Whitaker, and John McGinley as doctors at a VI hospital struggling with too many patients, excessive bureaucracy, and scarce resources. Thompson played another doctor on staff in a supporting role, hiding behind a lab coat as she was eight months pregnant at the time. She was not initially cast in the movie, but replaced the previous actress after the studio fired her. Article 99 received mostly negative reviews, with many critics accusing it of being a mash or IP off. It debuted at six at the box office, and the film, with a budget of 18 million, was able to collect only 6 million in cinemas. And in general, after this failure, the career of an actress in a big movie ended. In the main roles, it was not invited, and she played a supporting role, but very quickly, and they began to end and the actress went to television. Caroline in the City, Jane Doe projects in which Thompson played leading roles did nothing for her career. And now if the actress appears on television, then either as a director for the series or in episodic roles, despite the fact that Thompson has been working consistently for decades, the question of what happened to her movie career still lingers. While her career is still thriving and her longevity in the industry is impressive, her movie career had stalled out by the 90s after the Back to the Future franchise ended. Although Thompson was often typecast as a teenager even in her 20s, she tried to break out of that image with movies like Howard the Duck, which turned out to be one of the most infamous bombs in movie history. Although she made further attempts to break out of typecasting with movies like Casual Sex, and by playing a seedy prostitute who turns ugly for tailies from the crypt, none of those projects were successful. As a result, Thompson's movie career was relegated to cameo roles in low-quality films. While Thompson has had success on TV, 
it seems that her talents were better suited for the small screen than for movies. Even Thompson seems surprised by the unexpected trajectory of her career, as she remarks, wow, what a weird-ass career I've had, huh.